They were so into the torture of anorexic girls, the forced starvation of anorexic girls. They would not allow any food anywhere near the anorexic models. This is how obsessed they were with keeping these models as emaciated as possible. Guys from the forum would try to poke between her ribs or run the backs of their hands over her boniest parts. M, the photographer, pulled me aside and asked if I could try and convince the girls to model nude. He said it would make them feel better about themselves and M continually kept pressing her on it until she began to cry. As she was crying, I could see one of the forum members masturbating, like he was somehow aroused by her discomfort. So, hi again. This is a follow-up to my video on the anorexia fetishist site that I infiltrated and read you some of the absolutely gruesome and horrible posts from. I will link that video below if you haven't already seen it. You should probably watch that first to get a background on what I'm talking about. But at the end of that video, I asked if anybody had any more information regarding this forum, the photographers who were taking pictures of anorexic women for fetish shoots, and somebody did reach out to me with information which I want to share. Before I say another word though, I do need to say big heavy trigger warning for this video. It's really quite sad, really quite disturbing, not so gruesome and detailed as the last video, but more heart-wrenching, I think, because it involves personal stories of the girls who were involved with this forum and who did have their pictures taken. So to just give you the quickest recap on what I'm talking about, this anorexia fetishist site, they would book severely anorexic girls to come to hotel rooms in Europe where a photographer would take very fetishy almost nude, as nude as they could get the girls to be, photos of these anorexic women to then share on the fetish site. They would also invite forum members to come to these shoots, telling them you can't have sex with the girl, but she will probably let you masturbate while you look at her. So these girls would be stripped down in a hotel room with potentially a load of creeps, wanking off, looking at them while they were starved down to their bones, while, as I said, most anorexic women, you lose your sex drive completely, you don't have an interest in that, a lot of eating disordered people have previous sexual abuse trauma, this is a horrible situation to be put in, and the reason I want to make this video and just give you these girls' stories is that, as I said in the previous video, when I was severely anorexic, I was a big sharer of my photos online. It was the only thing I had to be proud of in the world was my emaciation. And if I had have been approached by a photographer who wanted to pay me to take pictures of my emaciation, it's quite possible that I would have said yes. And I do believe in the freedom of girls to do what they want to do with their body. If you want to model nude, then you should be able to do that, even if you're anorexic. However, you do need to be aware of what you are getting into. And it is so clear, so horribly, horribly clear from the stories that I've been told that a lot of these girls did not know what they were getting into and the effect it had on them afterwards <laughs> um, were pretty horrible. Um, so anyway, the girl that reached out to me, I'm just going to give her the code name of Kat. Um, that's nothing like her name, but it just gives me something to call her. So anyway, Kat reached out to me very soon after I posted that video. Um, and she told me that she had been in an abusive relationship with one of the photographers for this anorexia fetishist forum. And more than that, she had been manipulated into coming to these photo shoots in order to do hair and makeup for the girls. Um, so she had direct contact with these girls in the middle of the photo shoot. She was on site there. She also dealt with the manipulations herself of the guy she was dating, the photographer. Um, she too was eating disordered. 
um, but was mostly in recovery by the time she'd met this guy. She had been manipulated by him to believe that they were helping these girls. So the first thing that jumped out to me um, when I read the detailed description she gave me um, including a timetable of everything that went on on the shoots was that I was shocked by the money involved. These girls were taken advantage of in every single way including financially. These girls were on set for the whole day. They were on set for about seven hours. According to the timetable there was a strict timetable set out that Kat supplied me with. They were there for six or seven hours and more than that it seems like the photographer M actually made more money, I think, than the girls. Because the forum members, these creeps, they would pay the photographer M anywhere between 300 and 400 euros each to be allowed to come to the shoot and touch the girls. And they would also, these creeps would also bribe the photographer to try and push the girls to get naked or semi-naked or to let them kind of wank off. So I'm guessing the girls were probably slipped some of these bills kind of like, hey, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll give you a little bit of this if you get semi-nude. So the girls were, they were underpaid, but then they tried to work them on a bribery sort of system to get more naked and to allow more stuff to go on. But returning to the fact that they were there as I say, for between six and seven hours a day. One of the questions that I asked Kat regarded food and drink. If you saw the last video, you will know what their fetishes were, that they were so into the torture of anorexic girls, the forced starvation of anorexic girls, um, that they, they loved the idea of anorexic girls breaking hips and dying of their eating disorder and getting thinner than is humanly possible. So one of the questions I asked was what happened about food? You know, did they pester these girls about what they ate? Did they, what happened if they ate on site? Were they, were they ridiculed for it? Were they, was it like, oh my god, don't eat, you're gonna get fat? Did they feed into their eating disorder? The answer to that sounds like a yes, really. Um, there was no food allowed in the room. So if Kat, who was only there for hair and makeup, even if she wanted to have food or drink as a snack throughout this seven hour day that wasn't water, she had to step outside of the room because they would not allow any food anywhere near the anorexic models. This is how obsessed they were with keeping these models as emaciated as possible. And speaking as someone who has been a low-weight anorexic in the past and who has also done modelling shoots not while I was at my lowest weight but while I was on one occasion at quite a low weight, the myth that anorexics, low-weight anorexics, just, just don't eat, just don't eat at all, you know, they just go hours and hours and they don't eat at all, this is very rare. Generally speaking, one of the reasons anorexia kills your social life is because the food you do eat, you get fixated on and you plan your whole life around that. And obviously you've got the weakness factor that these girls were at extremely, extremely low weights, having to be on your feet posing and posing. I know anyone who's never done modelling thinks that it's a very lazy, easy thing to do, that you just, you know, slump against a wall, flop on a bed, that you just stand there and people take your picture. No, modelling is hard work. The positions you have to hold are very uncomfortable and you have to stay there for so long that your legs start shaking and this is when I was at a relatively healthy weight. Um, the one shoot I did where I was at quite a low weight and I had relapsed, I remember being so dizzy I almost got in a car accident on the drive home and that was a shoot that I ended up having to stay at for about I think four hours, four and a half hours. So seven hours, that's nearly double that without anything but water and barely even a sip of water that the girls were allowed. But the other thing regarding the exhaustion that these girls would experience was that they kept the rooms very, very hot, Kat said. Um, the main reason for this was to get the girls as naked as possible. Kat says she never did see a girl faint on sight, but she was constantly worried that they might just drop down dead in the hotel room 
just the state that some of them were in. I want to give you a bit of a direct quote about some of this. M, the photographer, pulled me aside, this is Kat the hair and makeup girl, and asked if I could try and convince the girls to model nude. He said it would make them feel better about themselves and that they'd be seen and appreciated. So I fell for it and fed them all the same lines he'd just told me. One of the girls agreed, but the other didn't. And M continually kept pressing her on it until she began to cry. As she was crying, I could see one of the forum members masturbating, like he was somehow aroused by her discomfort. I took her back into the bathroom to calm her down, redo her makeup, and M came in to apologise. Something he did in his professional and personal life, flipping between being kind and being incredibly aggressive. And the girl agreed to do some topless shots as well. And when I first read that bit about the forum member masturbating while this girl cried, that's not what any model sets themselves up for when they go to a photo shoot. And again, speaking as someone who was anorexic, generally speaking, your emotions are not that close to the surface when you're that starved. Um, it One of the reasons that people get addicted to anorexia and to starvation is the emotional numbing. You become very robotic, it numbs your emotions. Even if you're chronically depressed, it can numb a lot of that out. So your emotions are not that close to the surface. I was at a low weight, it would take a severe situation to get me to cry. Um, and to then have someone masturbate while that's going on, I, I can't even imagine. Ugh, it gets worse. During the shoot, the forum members wouldn't leave whichever girl wasn't being photographed alone. The room was incredibly warm, as I said, as they were, always were for the shoots. So I never thought to bring robes or anything for the girls to cover up when they weren't in front of the camera. And the guys from the forum would try to poke between her ribs or run the backs of their hands over her boniest parts. Any time one of the guys would go to touch either girl, they always gave me a help me kind of look but I never did anything under the impression that they wanted me to leave and that they were enjoying what was happening. Like how deep Kat was manipulated by this guy is so obvious from just the way she says all of this. Anyway, after the shoot, I stayed in the room to help the girls pack up their stuff. And at one point, one of them began crying, pulling at her hair and picking at her skin and nails. I thought she was maybe in pain. So I asked if she was okay. And she said that she was just very stressed. I walked the girls to their taxi and never saw them again after that. Until I heard that the girl who had been crying unfortunately took her own life a few months later. This event took place towards the end of my relationship with M, and it really was the breaking point for me. Realising that I'd been a pawn in the torture and objectification of these girls who were trying to cry out for help and who were already suffering. <laughs> when I read that bit the first time, that hit me like a 10 ton truck. The, you know, the idea that to, to have been in Kat's position and to have seen someone that upset and to have had them constantly looking at you with with this expression that you, you you don't know what you know whether they're saying get out you're making me uncomfortable or whether they're saying help me help me get out of here you're the only other female on set help me get out of here and then and then you find that that was the thing that pushed them to take their own life and uh that's how horrible this is you know that that is how horrible this is um that is that as i say that is not something that any model sets themselves up for and that really when i read that that was the point at which i was like this is gonna be a hard video to make dude but it needs to be out there because as far as cat knows this is all still going on girls are still being booked for for the fetishist forum um and that was why i wanted to make this video was just you know if you are thinking about it if you are thinking about going to one of these shoots you know as i say 
it's your body, it's your choice, um, but you do need to be aware that it might be the most traumatic experience of your life. Who knows whether other girls also took their own lives. Um, I mean, we, we know we know that there was one of them uh, who, who died, one of them who broke a hip bone. I don't know whether the one who died is the one we're talking about here or whether that one is another one who died. And the sick thing is that the guys on the forums are still talking about them. You know, the, the quote I gave you in the last video about my, my favourite super skinny girl is name, but she is dead. And, you know, they are still fapping over these girls that they potentially push to the brink of suicide. And, um, you know, I, I don't I don't want to get onto my own personal thoughts and experiences of suicide that, that just really upset me about it these days. Um, I, I, I don't want anyone going through that. Um, let alone after just thinking, hey, you know, I'm I'm kind of proud of my low weight. So all I have going on in my life, uh, these guys want to take photos of me. It's it's a few few hundred easy quid. Uh, let's go do it. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? And then someone pushes you so hard that you're in tears. Someone's masturbating over your tears. I mean, how belittled and how dehumanized are you going to feel that you're crawling out of your body with discomfort in that situation and someone is gaining sexual pleasure is, is fapping away in front of you and then this slimy slippery manipulative sociopath comes in and says oh I'm so sorry oh that was so inappropriate oh you know are you comfortable are you sure you're comfortable you know puts the reverse psychology on you and um you know eventually you get out there eventually you get nude and by the end of the shoot, you know, you're pulling out your own hair, you're picking off the skin of your nails, you're absolutely freaking out, and you never get over it to the point that you take your own life. That's not what anyone signs up for. So anyway, Kat basically ends by saying that um, even now she is still discovering just how much his work affected me that she was so brainwashed and manipulated that she thought she was helping these girls. Um, even though she had had an eating disorder herself, she knew what they were going through. M had somehow, through the power of mental gymnastics, made the idea that encouraging girls who were already starving themselves to death was helping them. Uh, and he made it sound like a perfectly logical idea. Um, she says she remembers feeling off about the whole thing but M reasoned away all her doubt with his manipulation and I passively went along with it, which, you know, eating disordered people, as I've said before, that kind of personality, you can be a bit of a pushover, um, particularly when you're in the thick of it or particularly when you're in an abusive relationship. Eating disorders, a lot of the time, it is it is a cry for help. It's a way to try and communicate with your body by, by showing, like, look at this, I'm a walking skeleton, I'm clearly not okay, someone help me and somebody finding that sexy somebody finding your your display of absolute despair that's taken you months if not years to starve yourself down to this point and suddenly going on this shoot where everyone is like let, let me let me wank over you let me let me touch all of this you know you're not comfortable in your body and yet these people are all over you touching touching your bones and asking what you eat in a day and and they want to see you thinner like I said you know the the comments you see about these photo shoots they always want to see the girls thinner next time um and you can imagine if if a girl came back and she'd gained even three pounds you know I've seen the comments on this forum about oh she looks a bit fuller in the breast I think she's gained some um I bet they they were open enough to say that to the girls on the shoot, you know, just just you know pinching pinching any tiny bit of flesh anywhere, and you know, ooh, would would you prefer it if that was gone? And I, you know, the amount of triggering comments that that must have come out on that shoot, and um, yeah, uh, she also says the girls I saw on shoot sets clearly were disorientated and very unprepared. Um, 
you know, you would be you would be disorientated. It's it's a bizarre situation to be in and you've been on your feet in a hot room with nothing but water and not much of that for seven hours. It is torture. It, it is the bloody Analympic story that that I oh, that I gave you in the last video. It's it's that. It's your body, it's your choice. If you want to do this, then that's up to you, but you should go in prepared. But um I would say don't. <laughs> I don't. I would say don't. Um, you know, if you want to capture what you look like in an artistic way um, and you want professional photographs of what you look like, find a photographer you can trust who is nothing to do with the pro-anorexia scene, nothing to do with the anorexia fetishist scene and just tell him I, I want to capture this, you know, for whatever reason, whether it's whether it's a weird bit of pride, whether it's total despair, whether you feel like you're capturing your last moments, whether you're about to go impatient and recover and you just want to remind yourself of how miserable it was, whatever your purpose is, just tell them that and and go on a shoot and probably you will be able to do a time for prints agreement and do it for free and you just, you get the prints as payment and that's how it works, you don't have to pay oftentimes um so if, if you want to get for photographs of yourself there, there are other ways to do it than this the length of time you're going to be there your body's not going to be up to it um the things they're going to put you through your mind is not going to be up to it i don't think anyone's mind would be up to it and uh there was more i wanted to get on to i i have had um a friend who's a model with an eating disorder um, she sent me some screenshots of some of the comments she's had from modelling shoots, um, people talking about how sexy her ribs are, things like that. Um, being a model and eating disordered um, is dangerously head fucky. Even if you are a model who is not out about being eating disordered, but you are simply a model who is noticeably underweight, as I was when I was modelling for most of the time, and you get requests that seem a little bit fishy, a little bit off, or even requests that don't seem a little bit off, but you know, you know you look sick, and suddenly you're getting these requests, um, do beware. <laughs> I've had triggering comments on modelling sets, you know, when I'd gone to one shoot really quite underweight, uh, he wanted me back and I had a great experience the first time he wanted me back, I came back, I was about five pounds heavier, I was still underweight, um, but I was five pounds heavier and the whole shoot was nothing but criticism. Um, you know, nothing I did was right. He, you know, he, he was huffing and blowing and sighing and storming around the studio. His demeanor was just completely different. Um, nothing, you know, nothing I did pleased him. He, you know, he, I think that guy would be very abusive in a relationship, just the way he was with me. Um, you know, and he, he kept going on about, about you know the lines and and just you know oh last time you know you you had these perfect effortless lines what are you doing this time it's just it's just not coming at you know and it was obvious that it was my weight that he was on about and I never went back to that guy um I never spoke to him again I don't think he even sent me a single photograph from that shoot um and uh but it was crazy because the first experience I had with him, he, you know, he was gushing over everything. You know, everything I did was perfect. Everything I did was amazing. And then it was night and day, five pounds heavier. Um, there's a lot of bad experiences out there being an eating disordered model. Um, so, yeah, just be careful, protect yourself. And I hope the girl who lost her life over this is in a better place now um yeah <laughs> anyway this is this is really long and depressing now so sympathies huge sympathies to Kat and hopefully the majority of the girls who were on shoots um are alive and are doing better and are getting away from this toxicity you know I, I saw sorry I, I keep saying I'm gonna shut up um I saw what it did to my friend Gretchen um who died in in 2014 um a very eating disorder she had a lot of creepers on her profile 
telling her how sexy she looked and how perfect she looked, you know, and, you know, she was, I think, 32. She looked about 65 by the end. She was so emaciated and so worn down. She had pneumonia more times than I have fingers and it was awful. And there were still these people telling her, you, you know, you look hot, you look sexy, you look perfect. And I know that triggered her, um, but she didn't have... I don't know whether it was the energy or the self-esteem to block them and to push them out of her life and to tell them where to go to hell. You know, and I would tell them to go to hell and then she would thank me, but she would still let them in. And, you know, the I think it was this, this awful two-sided drug for her, you know, the, the, the validation and the... that, but then equally the the triggering and the self-hatred and the, uh, you know, and then, then she was dead, um, not, not long after, um, so, you know, if you ever have been doing anything like this, um, even if you think it's not affecting you, um, it's not going to help you recover, is it? It's not, it's not going to get you anywhere happy, um, I can't imagine you've got great memories from these shoots, you know, m much, much the same as, modeling that I did, it wasn't like it traumatized me at the time. Sometimes it's not conscious what it does to you, but, but you know, you know on some level, or in, in this case, I knew on some level, this is literally how noticeable it is when I gain five pounds. Wow. Um, so get away from it if you can. Anyway, I hope this wasn't too depressing. Um, and uh, I will probably leave some videos linked on the end of this that are a bit more cheerful in case you feel like debriefing. So uh, go hug your cat or your dog. If it's a dog, go hug it for me. Um. <laughs> oh, and I have had uh, someone from the BBC contact me uh, regarding this forum, so I gave them the link. And uh, let's see if they call attention <laughs> to any of this. Um, could be interesting. Who knows where it'll go? So. Uh, might be a dead end, might might put a stop to them, who knows. Obviously I'll probably give you my take on what they said, um, but uh, who knows, who knows. So uh, anyway, links on the end for debriefing, gonna shut up now. See you later, bye bye.